said, well, I suppose my earliest, one of the earliest memories would be uh, old Fred and Uncle George. Uh, they decided that they were going to make some home brew, uh, which they did, duly did, and they bottled it up. They stored it out in the washhouse. Recently, we discovered, as you know, that Thomas actually played the cornet in the orchestra. That's right. And uh, you've, uh, you've told me that you remember seeing that corner in the shed at the bottom of the garden there. That's right. It was at the bottom of the garden. And uh, because we were always poking around in the shed, it was in a wooden box. And I thought, I've never seen inside that box. So I started to ferret what, what was in there. But I took everything out and I had a look at everything. And sure enough, it was, every bit was there. So I just put it all back where I got it. So where did you live as a very young child? I think it was 86 Ulster Street. Oh, in Hamilton. Right. In Hamilton. Right. And so you remember Thomas and Sarah quite well, your grandparents? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, because... Uh, Liz and I often used to toddle over to Parnell and we'd go and see them and uh, uh, Sarah would say, uh, would you two boys like to have some lunch with us? And of course being kids, naturally, we always, we never turn lunch down. No. And she said, wait till I go and get a piece of paper and a pencil, and you can write it down uh, to Mr. McIntosh. But you've got to remember that Mr. McIntosh is getting old, so you've got to write big and plain, so that he can no trouble reading it. So was he at the shop at the end of the he, lane? He was in the shop at the end of the lane. Right. And he used to... He said he starts work at 8 o'clock in the morning. He was there all day till 5 o'clock and at 5 o'clock he would shut the door of the shop and no sooner had he got it shut and somebody be yelling out, Mr McIntosh, because they would be halfway down that lane yelling out, out in his backyard. They wanted him to open the door which nine times out of ten, he always did. It would have been the beginning of a, uh, a big change in the family. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. yes. I remember Fred coming in. He woke, see, in the, in, a, in the next room down, there was a double bed. And Liz, Bob and I slept in the double bed. And Bob was always moaning about that he was getting shoved and pushed, you know. There wasn't enough bloody room to the business. But uh, uh, there was a lot of junk in that room. Uh, when I say junk, I call it, call it junk, but it's not really, because the uh, mum had three brothers, if I remember rightly. There was... Uh, uh, Victor, that's right. Who was called Vic? Uh, uh, Sam. That's why. That's why I got the name Sam, yeah. because Grandma reckoned Grandma uh, Thompson. She reckoned that I was the image of him when he was born. That's why she wanted our friend to call me Sam, Samuel, and it no. No way would he call him that. And she said, well, you call him what you like, but he'll always be Sam to me. And she said, so and I, out of it all, she bloody won. <laughs> yes, yes, she, Sam. She did. <laughs> she did win. She did win. Yeah, I believe but, she was quite a hard woman. But she, but she, she didn't win with the, with the cooking. Okay. 
She always used to bake. She was always baking some bloody thing or other. And old Fred used to take him to work and he finished up nailing the buggers on the wall. He did, in the office. I don't know whether it was in the office or in the showroom where he kept the stuff on display. But like her scones and stuff, I suppose. Yeah. Eh? Would it be like a scone? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, or, or, or buns or whatever. Whatever she made. But he, he, he nailed one type of it to the bloody wall with a leaded nail, I think it was. Uh, I'm trying to think of the girl that lived with us. And she lived with us because her parents died in the, that flu epidemic. And uh, uh, mum took her in, said, you come and you live with us now. Not Florence. Florence. Florence Hutchison. Yes. Yes. Florence Hutchison. Got a picture of Florence. Have you? At, yeah, at the, we, she was at the 1984 Kellip reunion. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. She was there. And she's the little girl in the photograph at the front of uh, the weeding picture. Yeah, well, that's right. Uh, and I think eventually uh, Dad give her a job in the office. You know, and that sort of thing. And there was, uh, I know he lectured her on what she could do and what she couldn't do in that office. Uh, you know, that the people come in and wanted to look at books or, or look at that. No way. No way. She can't, she can't dig them out to show them. They mustn't look at the books uh, and that sort of thing. Whether... Whether he learnt it from George or something, I don't know. Okay. But uh, uh, the books were always uh, verboten. You know, yeah. you, you can't you can't show the books. But uh, Les and I used to crawl around on the bloody ceiling of the showroom, uh, and that's what. And there was books up there, uh, old. Uh, uh, I think I think one one time I think there was a a joker in there that uh, was a bloody uh, grocer, and I, in the, there was a there was a, a sort of grocery book books up there. Fred and Joe built a batch at Rangitoto. Now it was this was built before twenty five. It must have been, I think, or, or not necessarily before 25, but a bit after it, a little bit after it, I think. I, because the first Christmas that Les and I came down to Auckland, because the school was shut, you see, and that, so we didn't have to go to school uh, and that sort of thing, he brought us down and took us across on the ferry boat to Rangitoto. And we, oh Christ, we found Maori bones, bloody skeletons, Christ knows not what. There were bloody bones, to, there were dozens of them. And uh, the, uh, that it came to light that, uh, well, that's how we found out about the, the bloody bats they had. Because we used to spend every Christmas there, see. Mm. Bob and Wynne never saw it. Frida never saw it. And that's what Les and I did. Because they used to go down there and we used to live there. And the old man used to take us fishing in a boat. He had a boat uh, and that sort of thing, you know. But uh, and Amy, had a, she had a place down there. See, the house was built on a hollow. There was a there was a bloody there was a ton of bloody room under the house because old Fred used to keep his motorbike under there. He had a, he had a motorbike called uh, the Overseas. It was called the Overseas, and uh, he used to ride that. He used to it it, uh, it was one of those bikes that you 
what you're supposed to do is you lift the bike up and put the, put it on the stand and then you could crank the back wheel and that would start it, get it started. And uh, But uh, I think in the cranking it one day, he bloody either hurt his wrist or he pulled it or he did something to it, I know that. And uh, uh, so he put it, he took, he took the magneto out off it and he put it under the house. And I think he used to bloody walk, I think, because it wasn't that far yeah. to the workshop. So over the years, um, old Fred sort of got a, he got a bit of a bad sort of, bad rub really, didn't he? But he wasn't really such a bad guy, was he? Oh no, yeah. oh no, no. I don't got... think he was quite the, quite the loose cannon that they painted him to be in later. Oh no, uh, no, no. He, he was a bloody, he was a first rate plumber. First grade. Now, I'm not certain about this part. The Hamilton Hotel, I think it was, which was in the main street of Hamilton. Uh, it got burnt down. It burnt, caught fire. And they, 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 they couldn't find one of the maids. They couldn't find her. Uh, and uh, they went to old Fred to see if he had any clues where she might be. Right now, I don't know what the hell she did in the hotel, I don't know. You know, they, they've, they, you know, these people have got certain jobs to do and that. And he told me, he said, go and look underneath the, the ovens. And he said, that's where you'll find her, I think. And that, that's where they did. That's where they found her. Well, everybody, they were all, like, from your father down, very hands-on. What about your grandfather? Do you remember if he was very hands-on? I mean, no, no, no. I never saw him doing anything. Okay. Uh, he, but there was all, he, he always had a garden. Ah, yes, so did Fred. Uh, so did, yeah, Fred. Yeah. He, and he used to grow beans. Yeah. Old Fred used to grow beans. Yeah, yeah. He, and he used to get the... Uh, now, what were they? Uh, Marifat peas. Oh, no, Marifat beans, I think they were. And he used to grow them. The bloody things used to grow six feet high. Mm. Yes, I know. I used to do gardening for Fred when I was a teenager. I was his hands. <laughs> oh, yeah. I used to stir the chicken stuff, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, you had a good garden even then. Oh yes. Well, yeah. Garden, yeah. Well, yeah. and then then it it tapered off, it tapered off, and he went in for growing. Uh, there were the, 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 the flowers. He used to go around the waterfront to the tip. Remember the tip on the waterfront road. Mm. Uh, on there was a tip there. Fred used to go over there. He used to walk over the on the ferry. And then he got on the railway line and he just walked the railway line till he got to the tip. See? Then he'd ferret amongst it, find what wire he wanted, you know, and he'd just put a kink in it till he got a, a, what he reckoned he wanted. Then he'd go home and set to work, light the old blow lamp up, get his blow lamp going, get his iron going and that sort of thing. And he used to so, so, solder the wires together in so many links. Uh, those were the ones that he grew the uh, uh, the flowers with, uh, and the flowers. Sweet peas. Exactly, sweet peas. Because he had a fence and Thames too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. You can see it's made of plumbing pipe. You know that sort of. Yes. 
you know, the bends. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, he was good at the sweet yeah. bends, wasn't he? Well, he used to get it all from the waterfront. Okay. <laughs> you know, could he, had, he had plenty of time, you know, mm. uh, and, and that sort of thing. And he'd walk down Violet Crescent, down the steps, and, and then round that right round the bay until he could get to the sea. And we'd walk along the edge of the tide uh, and then up onto the sewer. And okay, and right round past uh, the, uh, can't think of the bay now, it's the end of uh, Victoria. Uh, no, I can't think of it. Well, Sam, thank you very much for um, sharing your memories with us. That's um, been most valuable for lots of people.